Hello and welcome to chapter 11, Switch Security Configurations. All right, so in this chapter, we're strictly going to be talking about rectifying all the different or mitigation against all the different types of attack that we talked about in the last chapter. So what I want you to do is I want you to write everything that you see on the screen and submit that when we're all done. But please, I implore you not to fast forward the video so you can type everything and just get it over with it's very you know this is not going to last this is going to be between 10 to 15 minutes so it's important for you just to listen and type while you are listening all right so let's start so the first thing you are going to do when it comes to port security is when you get a switch the first thing you do is you're going to shut down everything and all i wrote down is 4 to 14 because i was going to use give you an example of using four ports but it's best to go interface range Fast Ethernet or Gigabit Ethernet if you have a Gigabit port, 0 to 24, and then you hit Enter, and then you top shut down. All the ports are closed. And then you can open one at a time whenever you need them. So that's the first step. Shut down all unused ports. The second step is if you want to prevent MAC address table overflow, so you're going to do all of this. To enable a port security and limit the MAC addresses allowed on a port, so that's what you're going to do. So we're going to limit the amount of port addresses. The port must be in access mode to enable port security. All right. By default, all ports are in dynamic mode. You cannot enable port security on a dynamic port. It has to be access or trunk. And typically in this course, we're not going to do it on the trunk. So the first thing you're going to do is, if you're going to do the to prevent the MAC address table overflow, is you're going to type interface range from 0, 4. This is going to apply to all four ports. Switch port mode access. You're going to switch the port mode from dynamic to access. And now you can say switch port dash security. Now you have enabled port security. When you do this, the maximum number of hosts that are allowed to go in is one. But, you know, you could type in any amount you want. So this command right here, when you do a maximum, you don't have to write the word default. Maximum of one, that means only one MAC address. So the MAC off command that will, uh, you know, um, overflow the MAC address table with fake MAC addresses won't be able to do that anymore because only one MAC address is allowed to go in. All right. Then you say switch port mode access. I'm sorry, switch port port security MAC address sticky. So there are three different modes. You can actually have them either sticky. Let's talk about that. Um, Dynamic, you could either do manually, you could write a MAC address in here. So you can say, I only want the following MAC address to be in, or you could have it dynamically, which means you don't type anything, and which means the, the, the first guy that comes in with the MAC address will remember it. If you don't type any word, you know, stick or nothing you type in here, right? Just write switchboard dash security MAC address. Uh, and then what happened is uh, this is only while the running configuration is running. Next time you reboot the system, it's going to have to relearn the MAC address again. So the best thing to do is if you want it on a specific MAC address to always be, and if you had MAC address is always, you know, let's say you have a desktop and it's always connected to port four. So you then you say MAC address sticky. So what it's going to do when the, that PC that's connected to port four sends in a frame to port four. It's going to remember it, make it part of the configuration file, and you can save it in the NVRAM, and it will always be there. All right, so that is as if it was sticky, right? So you either you do manually, write the MAC address, don't write anything, or write the word sticky. Sticky is the best way to go. It becomes like a static MAC address. All right, so you can also say port switch port port security aging time for 10 minutes all right so after 10 minutes switch port security aging type you can make it either absolute or inactivity for 10 minutes so for 10 minutes you can either say uh you can able or disable the static aging port so we just did that by 10 minutes switch port aging time here's there's your 10 minutes and uh, switch port security aging type absolute. So if you write after this command, you write absolute. What that means is you're going to secure the addresses on the port 
are deleted after the aging time. So after 10 minutes, in this example, we're going to delete all the MAC addresses that are in there, right? If you write down inactivity, for example, instead of absolute, then you are going to, if there is, after 10 minutes of inactivity, we're going to delete all the files. I'm sorry, all the MAC addresses as well, okay? If they are inactive. Um, you can enable or disable static aging, by the way, by typing switchboard security aging. If you type that in, then you are good to go. So this is the command that you need. You've got to type in the time in minutes, and then you decide, is it absolute or inactive? All right, so this is, um, this is not absolute. This is inactive. I got to rewrite the word inactive. So if you type inactive, after inactivity up to 10 minutes in this case. So in this example, we chose absolute. That means after 10 minutes, we're going to delete the IP addresses, uh, MAC addresses, and then relearn them. All right, if you write inactivity here, after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes of inactivity, we delete, right? All right, now, what happened if there's a violation, somebody else came in other than the address that's in the, in here? Somebody's trying to break in. What are we going to do? We've got three choices. The default is shut down the interface. So what are the three choices when there's a violation? And the three choices are shut down is the default, right? So immediately we'll shut down the default if there's a violation. And, uh, and you'll get well, something called error disabled state. That means nothing will go in. You have to go in and type shut down. On the interface and type no shutdown to re-enable it so please remember that if there is a shutdown because of a security breach then that's called error disabled state that means you will have to go and shut down the interface and re-enable it by typing no shutdown the other choices are restrict and protect restrict that means it will drop packets and write it down in the lock server all right it will not allow the intruder to come in, but it will not shut the interface, but it will also write in a syslog server that this happened. The least secured mode is the protect. If you write protect instead of shut down or restrict, that means you're just blocking the, um, the intruder from coming in and you don't keep track of them or anything like that. No, you know, you do not generate syslog messages. That means you don't put them in the log. So I prefer to have it shut down. So this would be a good example of how to protect, where's the example, right here, on your ports, all right, from here to here. That's the best way to do it. And the defaults are also, you know, the default of maximum of one, and the default of a shutdown is also a good idea. The aging time, 120 minutes, 10 minutes, that's really up to you. And do you want it absolute or inactivity? Again, that's up to you. All right, so moving on. Now we're going to talk about how do you verify the port security? Well, these are the commands to double check to make sure if your port security is uh, configured the way you want it to be configured. Show port security interface on Fast Ethernet 01. That's going to, it's going to display the current security settings. And if you don't like it, then you can change it, of course. Right? Typing one of these commands that we just discussed earlier. Show port security by itself, it will display the port security on the whole switch. Show run, okay, and with the uh, the bar, the pipe, I mean, begin on interface 01. So you want to see what is the security, uh, what is the show run on interface 01. And this is going to verify if the MAC address, the sticky MAC address is there, all right? If you did that already. Show port security is to verify. Also can tell you the MAC addresses that are sticking to the configuration. So these are good commands to play around with when after you um, you do your port security on the ports. All right, so now let's talk about how to mitigate VLAN attacks. Well, number one, uh, um, there is the VLAN hopping. So spoofing the DTP messages from the attacking host cause the switch to enter into a trunking mode. We talked about that on the last chapter. Introducing a fake switch and enabling trunking. The attacker can then access all the VLANs on the victim switch. 
from the fake switch, or you can do double tagging. The attack takes advantage of the way the hardware on most switches will operate. So what do you do? Here's an example on how to mitigate VLAN hopping. All right, you go to the ports that you want, but let's say from one to four, to disable the DTP, you make it what? Uh, switch port mode access, right? You go from dynamic to trunk, uh, to access, which is uh, data port, right? That's how you disable the dynamic drinking port call on end devices. On the trunks, you would type no negotiate. We'll talk about that later. Uh, you go to the other, from five to 24 ports, you say switch port mode access, and they shut down the interfaces. Well, this should have been shut down to begin with, and so you probably don't have to do this. If you did, if you shut down all the interfaces, by the way, in the very beginning, then anytime you want to do any of this, you have to type no shut to re-enable them, right? So that's probably a good way of doing this. Uh, switch port access VLAN 99, you want to move the, the ports that are unused after you shut them down to a VLAN that's not being used at all. Right? So that's probably you create a VLAN 99 in any ports. You'll move them to that VLAN, then you shut them down. That's probably a good idea too. If you want to leave it in VLAN 1, that's fine. Uh, just don't populate VLAN 1 with anything, with users. All right? Uh, let's say Fast Ethernet 04 is a trunk. This is how you disable the DTP. You type switch port, no negotiate. And the, then a the user... You know, an attacker, if they, if they plug in into that and pretend to be a trunk, it's not going to happen. All right. Uh, switch port tr trunk native VLAN 99. That means you move the native VLAN from VLAN 1 to VLAN 99. All right. DHCP attacks. All right. If you remember the DHCP starvation, it uses the gobbler utility. That's going to starve. It's going to steal all the... It's going to ask the DHCP server to give them all the IP addresses, and there is no IP addresses left for legitimate users in the LAN. Or you could do pretend to be a DHCP server, right? So how do you mitigate against that? You use DHCP snooping. By the way, this is also required by the dynamic art inspection filter. It's going to filter DHCP messages and rate limit the DHCP traffic on untrusted port. You know, what do we mean by trusted and untrusted port? I'm going to stop right here. Uh, you don't, don't write anything under, up to here you have to write. Or you know what? If you wrote the solution, that's fine. But we're going to start with this page uh, on the next video. Okay? So um, uh, write everything up to here. And I'll see you on the next video.